Tonight, Oakland County Executive L. Brooks Patterson is talking with Action News about how his life has changed since that crash two years ago that almost took his life. And only on 7, our reporter Jim Kirchner with an inside look at the crash and an inside look at Brooks' most personal fears and outlook on life from a wheelchair. There's a, a accident, a bad accident up here at this corner. Oh, Jesus. Hold on, I got a bunch of 911s, ma'am. Hold on. It sounded bad from the beginning. It looks like everybody's kind of running here and there. They're just trying to help. It did not take long for police arriving at the scene to determine how bad this was. Possibly a paralyzation. How much of the actual crash do you remember? Not a bit. Patterson was in a drug induced coma. For recovery. I'm glad because from what I find out from my family, I had both arms in cast, my leg was in traction, uh, my hip was operated on, my knee was, was uh, shattered. At, I mean, I had, you know, just multiple breaks. These are actual police photos of the Chrysler 300 Patterson and his driver Jim Cram were in. The airbags deployed. Neither were wearing their seat belts. The pictures show Patterson wrapped his seat belt behind his seat. To keep it out of the way. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I mean, I did you? Did you? No, were I you, didn't. Were you I so conscious that you just moved it out of the way and? Jim, I don't know. The crash happened when the driver of this Volkswagen turned left in front of the Chrysler at the corner of Walton and Updike in August of 2012. That driver, Anthony Pernito, told police another car in front of him turned left first. They had a blinking yellow turn light. I proceeded through the light. All I know is the car came out of nowhere and we had impact. Prenito pleaded guilty to failure to yield and paid a $125 fine. But the cost to pay off Cram and Patterson is part of a confidential settlement. But millions. If I could get my health back, I'd take that in a day. Uh, but you can't. His driver, a former state police officer, Jim Cram, is paralyzed from the neck down. He declined to discuss the case. I don't know how you compensate Jimmy, the young guy in his 60s, who would be bedridden the rest of his life. What's that worth? I think he'd say, I don't want 50 million. I want to be able to walk. The evidence in the case also comes from the Chrysler 300 data recorder. Cram was speeding, doing 54 in a 45 zone, a small mitigating circumstance. Under the law, I think there's a 5% set off against that. Okay. So, yeah. You know, and we didn't, we didn't, uh, I don't think anybody's denied it. Brooks Patterson says conversations with his family were as he is direct. We all knew that you weren't going to make it. You, the medical staff gave you a 3% chance of survival. 3%. And I thought, whoa, no, had you told me that, had I heard it, I probably would have curled up from the fetal position and just given up. Which brings us to the obvious question. How has this changed? The longtime elected official, known for being outspoken and visible, he now picks family before the career. If my grandson was playing a football game, uh, uh, and I had a speech before 500 people. I always took the speech. Today, I go to the game. The settlement money is for both Brooks Patterson and his driver, James Cram. They're both done with their part of the case now. What's left? The insurance companies are litigating how much they each have to pay that settlement money. In downtown, Jim Kurtzner, 7 Action News. You know, I mean, when your life flashes before you, you know, you reflect on a lot of different things. It has changed. He has mellowed. I mean, he's still outspoken and he'll still say outrageous things every once in a while, but you can just see that he has mellowed out. And I think he's looking at things a little differently. I'm sure, especially if he's giving up a speech for his grandson's game, which is <laughs> very, very important. Very, yeah, I mean, family, family, absolutely. All right.